In this video, we are going to simulate a bottle flip without liquid. We don't know how much rotation to give the bottle as we flip it into the air to hopefully have it land standing upright on the table, so we will run through a bunch of different tries looking for successful outcomes. A Python script will run through an enumerated list setting the bottle to be thrown with a specific amount of rotation coming out of our hand, which will be handled in Blender by the animation system. The Blender physics engine will then take over simulating the flight and landing of the bottle on each iteration. Once the bottle has settled, the script will detect if it lands upright on the table or falls over and record the outcome on the result board before moving on to the next attempt in the list. To simulate the impact a little liquid in the bottle would have had, the origin of the bottle shape was placed a little lower than the center of geometry for the bottle. As you will see in a moment, each iteration is set up with a few keyframes before being evaluated. In this example, we're going from 40 to 160 degrees of rotation out of our hand in 5 degree increments. Okay, now let's take a look at how this was done. The bottle starts here and is flipped up in the air with a certain degree of rotation before being essentially let go out of our hand to finish its flight through the air and then land on the table. This is done with three keyframes for each iteration. The first keyframe is the initial location of the bottle and the orientation of it, the rotation. And the second keyframe, which is six keyframes later, or six frames later, is going to include the rotation that it's got to try. In this case here, our first rotation was 40 degrees. And once that's in place and the bottle's been fl flipped and ready to leave our hand, the next keyframe turns it over to the physics system and that then finishes the rest of the simulation, including the landing on the table. And, and then two and a half seconds later, it's evaluated whoop, to see if it's standing or lying down. And this is done based on the location, the z-axis location of the bottle. Once that evaluation is done, it's posted to the display board, which you won't see here because it, the script isn't running right now. This is just the keyframes that the script generated. And then the bottle is reset to the initial location and the next degree that's being tried or attempted is put in play, which will then be keyframed to be flicked out six frames after the first one and <clears throat> now we're at 45 degrees physics engine will take over it'll run through and then do the evaluation this will happen over and over again until all of the iterations that we listed in our enumerated list are successfully executed behind the scenes we have the um, flipping beginning on one frame and then adding five frames to that is when we're going to let it out of our hand and then we're going to evaluate it two and a half seconds later or at the 75th frame of each iteration and we're going to move this window forward during each iteration by adding to the frame that we left off with from the, from the prior iteration. The bottle height is going to be evaluated based on this value here which will detect whether the bottle is standing or not and if it is standing, it'll have the height that's needed in order to claim success. The initial values for the location of the bottle are defined here, just arbitrarily based on some experimenting. And the initial rotation is also defined here in case I wanted to change that later. The final uh, X, Y, and Z um, values are also defined to give an idea of where our hand would have swung to, to bring it into the air. But the rotation or the flipping of it is defined by these iterations down here and it will go through these. You could ideally even put this in a, in a range, um, but I've enumerated these here going by five degree increments. The flipping of the, of the bottle is achieved by two animation or animated controlled keyframes and then one physics one that's set up down here for each iteration. For example, the 40 degrees that would be sent in through here and the initial bottle location would be set up based on those values up top. And then the flipped bottle would be done based on the degrees that are being sent in and the location that is going to be where our hand ends in the air to let it go. And then the animation system is done with the first and the 
six keyframes or five keyframes later, and the physics engine will take over for the remaining two seconds, which we'll turn on. We have the animation system turned on for the first two keyframes. Then we switch it to the physics system to take over to govern the movement through to the last keyframe. Once that keyframe is reached, we're going to evaluate the result and see if the bottle is standing or not. And that's going to be done based on the z-axis value. It'll be higher if it's standing and lower if it's, if it's lying down. And it's got to meet that threshold, which we defined up here, which I empirically observed based on moving this object up on the table, standing up and, and measuring its location versus it lying down and found that sweet spot where this means success and anything lower is is a fail. And one of the trick here is as you're building that result board on the screen in the text object, if you want to change colors within it using Python, you need to flip to edit mode, which this toggle will do if you were in object mode initially, and then work with the text that's in there to, to um, add it, insert it to it, and then select it and then define the color. So in this case here, I'm, I'm defining it to either one or two based on a success or failure being green or red. And once I've added the, the result to the board, I'm then selecting it and then assigning the material color and then backing out. And then for each frame, we have to render it as we go because the objects are changing through it every iteration and we don't want the objects at the end of the simulation to be part of the initial frames. I'll really quickly, I'll take you over to here. This text box here is where the result board would be. And if we look over here, you'll see the different materials, uh, the blue for the degrees, and then the green and the red are now available in slots one and two to then be assigned these material values here once they're done. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. And if you like this or found it entertaining, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks so much.